What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome to this super simple Docker installation guide where I'll take you from beginning to end installing Docker and installing a user-friendly front end like Portainer or Dockage. This is a continuation of my server setup series and in this one we're actually gonna do something with it, set up Docker and get going with that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. I've already opened an SSH terminal here into the physical box next to me and logged into it. So we'll get to installing a Docker as well as Portainer or Dockage for easy management and things like that. So let's begin. In the description down below, you'll find the text version of this guide, which I'll be following through as there's super easy copy buttons over here, which you can use to paste commands into your terminal. Everything's explained in text format. So this video is more of a help you get through this article if you don't want to spend all that time at reading and it should be the quickest way to get you going properly. Starting off at the very top, before we can actually install Docker, we need to make sure a few things are in place. First of all, our system is up to date. I'll copy this command here, which should bring our Debian or Ubuntu based systems up to date by updating and upgrading apt, apt packages, and installing a few important ones which are required for Docker's installation. These should already be included with your system. If they're not for some reason, they'll be installed in this step here. Once it completes, we just need to clarify a few more things before we can continue. First of all, firewalls. Docker manages its own firewalls for the most part. Tools like UFW won't really have that much control, if any, over Docker containers. So if you're using something like UFW to only allow access to certain ports, keep in mind you'll need to be vigilant and pay attention to what ports you open inside of Docker or use an external firewall. You can still use tools like UFW, but don't be surprised when they don't work as you expect with Docker containers. Also, also keep in mind, if you're going to be using something like MailCow Dockerize to host your own mail server, you'll need to completely uninstall and disable UFW as it can interfere with how this process works, all the different containers, and do really bad things. Just make sure to verify whatever you're planning to run doesn't have anything crazy like that that you need to worry about. For the most part, installation steps for things like this should run through everything you need to know, especially in the prepare your system section. That being said, for the most part, firewall isn't something you really need to worry about. For the most part, Docker manages its own and unless you specifically open a port, it's not going to be visible to anything on your network or the wider internet. That's great. Then your minimum distro requirements. Obviously, you'll need to make sure your system is up to date. You'll need at least, if you're using Ubuntu, Ubuntu Focal 20.04 LCS, which is a pretty old version from 2020, or at least Ubuntu Oracula 24.10, which is a more recent version of Ubuntu. And when it comes to non lcs LTS distros, you need to make sure that you're practically running the most up-to-date stable version of Ubuntu or above in order to use Docker properly. If you're not currently using one of these two versions of Ubuntu, you can use something like sudo do release upgrade, or if you're using Ubuntu desktop, start up the updater from settings or use this command here. That being said, there are minimum requirements which you can check over here for all different system versions, whether it's Debian, Red Hat Enterprise, things like that. Finally, if you're going to be installing Docker, make sure you don't have previous versions of Docker installed. Just copy this command here and paste it into your terminal to uninstall previous versions of Docker. If you've got nothing installed, it'll just silently fail through all of these, which is fine. Perfect. Now, finally, we can actually get to the installation. Over here, I've documented installing Docker on Ubuntu and installing Docker on Debian. Both of these are very similar with very minor differences between them. And for the most part, installing on any distribution of Linux is mostly the same. Same. Trust Docker's keyrings, allow Docker to be downloaded, download and install, and that's that. These final steps over here, add your user to the Docker user group, if not done automatically. And finally, it'll refresh your session by switching user to yourself, just to make sure that you have proper access to Docker commands. If you finish the installation process, copying the commands directly from Docker's installation wiki or Docker docs, you may find that after you run the installation step, when you try to create different volumes, run Docker containers, you may receive some errors saying something about permission denied trying to access Docker's sock. It basically just means that you need to reopen your SSH session or switch back to your user and make sure you're in the Docker user group. 
Anyways, tons of explaining. Copy this top block if you're on Ubuntu, or this bottom block if you're on Debian. If you're on anything else, you'll find a link here, where you can choose it from the sidebar here. For me, I'm installing on Debian, so I'll copy the Debian block down here and paste it into our terminal. First of all, it'll add and trust Docker's GPG key, add Docker's repository to our app sources, then it'll finally install a Docker Community Edition, CLI, things like that. Scrolling all the way down, it's currently asking me for my password as we've successfully installed Docker. So all that's left to do is enter our password, and just like that, we should now be able to use Docker commands in our system. And as we've refreshed our user session, we shouldn't have any Docker sock permission errors, which is great. Now let's scroll down to testing, where we can test out our first Docker container. If you've never used Docker before, this is a great example command. This command downloads and runs the Hello World container from Docker Hub. Essentially, it just says hello from Docker, Docker's working properly, and this is what happened in order to create the text that you see here. Perfect. It also gives you steps to running an Ubuntu container, which is basically just a complete version of Ubuntu Linux, which you can run inside of anything that runs Docker containers. Great. Finally, now that we're done installing a Docker and everything is complete there, let's install a Docker management tool. Both Portainer and Dockage are used through your browser, which means you don't even need to SSH into your system in order to control your setup. Personally, I find Portainer a much better option here, but it's all up to user preference. Portainer is much more advanced and definitely way more confusing to look at for beginners, as there's access to just so many different tools built into one place. You can control Docker, Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, and many other things. Not to mention, you can bring them all into one environment to manage from one centralized place. There's so much that you can do inside of this, no wonder it's pretty much the business standard. Dockage, on the other hand, is really just for managing Docker Compose files in this stack-oriented manager. So it's a really simple, really broken down UI that allows you to just start up and manage simple stacks of containers such as Jellyfin, Nginx Proxy Manager, things like that, all from one place, really, really simply. This is probably a great place to start if you're not planning on doing much with it, but if you plan on learning Docker, Portainer is a great way to do so, as it just has everything in one place. That being said though, neither of these tools require you, at least for the most part, to learn Docker commands to control a Docker through the CLI, but learning these is of course a great thing to do and I would definitely recommend it. Not to mention you'll probably be using some of these anyways to control your Docker containers and stacks as Portana does a lot but it's still good to learn these things on the side. Portana has both a community edition which is completely free and a business edition which does cost money but you get your first three nodes for free which essentially just means clicking this link here you'll get access to all of the business features completely for free. You'll find a full list down here. Scrolling through it, all of these business edition options you don't get usually, you'll have complete free access to on up to three nodes. What is a node? Well, essentially, this is a node. Where I'll be installing Portana is a single node, this machine. If you're running it on three different virtual machines or three different physical machines, you've reached your free limit and you'll need to purchase a business edition license if you want to use business edition on more systems. Community edition does have most features, so it's probably Probably what you can use anyways, especially if you don't want to give Portainer your personal details, at least for now. I'll show you how to install both Portainer and Dockage, but we'll start up here with Portainer. I'll copy the Community Edition installer simply by copying this and pasting it into our terminal. Just keep in mind, if you ever wish to switch to the Business Edition, you'll need to use the Business Edition container, swapping out this command here, and essentially just copying your settings over, not to mention putting in your license key. Super simple, after you've copied and pasted these, now you've got access to Portainer on port 9443. So as this is installed on a separate system, instead of using localhost, I'll be using my Nux IP address, colon 9443, and in our browser, it takes us across to our brand new installation of Portainer. Here we'll need to set up a password and confirm it. For this, I'll randomly generate one, and there we go. At the very bottom, before we create it, you can restore from a Portainer backup, or you can 
disallow collection of anonymous stats just by unticking this. For now, I'll create the user, remember our password, and now we're straight into Portainer. Here we can get started, which sets up our local environment, and clicking into it, you can already see how much RAM we have, CPUs, images that are running, volumes, set up inside of Docker, and everything else like that. Well, I'm not going to dive too much into what each of these things it means. In Docker, essentially, a container runs an app, service, or multiple services, such as hosting a website using Nginx, things like that. Stacks are collections of multiple containers which speak to each other through networks. Networks can be used to control intra-container communications, so Nginx speaks to another, let's say, Next.js server where your website's set up. That web server container speaks to an API container which speaks to a MySQL container, things like that, all through networks here. You can expose ports to allow access from your LAN or the wider internet and things like that. Docker containers that run apps and services are actually downloading and using images. We already downloaded and set up the Hello World image, which is visible over here. You can see it's taking up 10 kilobytes, but Portainer is eating up 268. These are essentially your operating system and the files included to actually get your containers up and running. Finally, volumes are persistent storage, which are given out to each different container as they request them, such as Portainer's data over here. They'll be left behind when you shut down and remove containers, but you can always come in here and manage them, removing this one, for example, which was from a test earlier. This is a really powerful dashboard that gives you control of everything. And as you noticed from the home section over here, we can actually manage multiple environments, so up to three different nodes inside of this one place here. Well, I think you might need to upgrade to the business edition for that, but again, you can do that completely for free. Fantastic. Not to mention when you're inside of something like like this from the stacks section here. Instead of using Docker compose files, you can define them in here, update them, things like that, and spin up entire stacks of containers from inside of your web browser really, really easily. Not to mention, inside of containers, you can go ahead and check logs, information, connect to the CLI so you can interact with files inside of your container, etc., etc. If we check out logs for Portainer, you'll see some info here about our server and that currently we don't have Podman installed so it doesn't support it. Things like that. Really, really cool, really powerful. Let's quickly speak about Dockage. In order to install and use Dockage, which you can use at the same time as Portainer, they just manage Docker, allowing you to set up stacks and containers, they won't interfere with each other, at least directly, so using them at the same time in parallel is completely fine. Pick whichever one you want to use more and delete the other one, etc. It's really up to you. I'll copy this command here to install Dockage and drop it into our terminal. This will connect and download Dockage, but you can see I don't have access to create these different folders, so for now I'll just switch user to root and let's try and run this again. You can of course just add sudo before it, things like that. For now, it's created these two different folders, cd'd into dockage, and downloaded the docker-compose.yaml file. This docker-compose file is actually just this over here. We could quite literally copy this, or copy it from the dockage website, and drop it into Portainer if we wish, or we can just use docker-compose-up-d in order to run it from this folder here, such as this. However, I think just for fun, let's do it out of Portainer. So Portainer connected to our local server. I'll go to stacks, make a new stack here, paste it in, and I'll call this stack dockage. Just like that, I'll scroll down and deploy the stack at the very bottom, which is essentially the same as running docker compose up d on this YAML file here. And just like that, dockage is up and running. We can manage the stack from here, see all of the different containers inside of it. For now, it's just dockage and is running with port 5001 exposed. You can click this link here, or again, visit it in your browser. You'll also find a link right over here. So heading across to this, we can now set up our dockage account. Here, I'll give a username of say techno and I'll use uh, the same password as Portana. Create and just like that we're now inside of a dockage. Fantastic. Here we can use the console in the top right if you want to enable this, though keep in mind enabling this is a security risk. You can run docker and rm commands but you can do some really harmful things on your system so this is disabled by default but if you wish to enable it you can do so here. If you wish to expose this to the internet which I really wouldn't recommend, definitely don't have this enabled. If you're running it on a home setup that's not exposed to the internet in any way, sure knock yourself out. Inside of here we can pretty much only manage 
storage stacks of containers. And that's that. As you can see, there's no stacks running, even though Portainer is running and Dockage is running here as well. This can only manage things that you put into it. So for example, if we copy and paste the hello world command here, bam, into here, we should be able to convert to compose, assuming you don't have things like sudo before it. And now it'll give us a really simple Docker compose file with everything set up. We can give it a name of say, hello world, lowercase only. We'll run it on this node or system, which is Dockage agent in this case. You can add new containers to it, edit images and services inside of it by clicking down here, changing ports, adding volumes, restart policy, like like always on failure, etc. environment variables, networks. You can do quite a bit from here, but of course it's relatively limited in that you can only manage things that you set up in here. So if we save this, for which I can't use spaces either, there we go. Now we should be able to start it and see some response over here. So the stack was created and right over here is our response. It's saying hello from Docker, everything worked as we hoped. This is obviously a much simpler setup than copying this, rummaging through the entirety of Portainer to stacks, making a new stack here, defining things manually. We can't just click around in a GUI and add different containers, things like that. But once we create it and deploy it, things are mostly the same. You can visit it and then for each of these, you can check out logs, etc., etc. So again, this is way simpler than using Portainer. And if you're only planning on running, say, a Minecraft server, maybe a website, this is a fantastic place to do it. It's not overwhelming at all. Portainer, on the other hand, is so much more powerful and because because there's many more abilities and features can be a lot more confusing, especially for beginners. But yeah, that's really that. You now know how to set up Docker as well as Portainer or Dockage on your Linux system. Hopefully this video helped you. You'll find this article again linked down below with copy and paste commands. Thank you all for watching. My name is Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.